Hello everyone. I'm very excited to let you know that with the latest version of Nutanix Collector, now you can connect to NetApp contact boxes and gather the configuration information of the SIP shares. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate what all can you pull from NetApp boxes. So if you see in the latest version of Collector 3.5, uh, you have an option of ONTAP SIP shares. So I'm going to select this and enter the IP address of the cluster management box and then feed in the username and password. Point to note that we don't need any administrative privileges to gather the information. Uh, just a read-only user is good enough and we just need to make sure that the ONTAPI interface is enabled for this user. More details about this in the user guide. So let's go ahead and connect to this cluster management IP and see what we can gather from there. A point to note while it is connecting, support for ONTAP SIP shares is available only on Windows version of Nutanix Collector. So now it's connected to the cluster and it has discovered that it has one cluster and 20 plus SIP shares over here. Let's go ahead and click collect the data for the SIP shares. This might take some time depending on how many. So here we go. We have three levels of information here. The capacity level information, efficiency level information, and the share performance levels. In the capacity, you can see what's the total provision capacity and what's the used capacity. And under the data efficiency, you can see the efficiency achieved through compression, deduplication, and the overall storage efficiency that's achieved. And in the SIP shares, you can see the various performance levels associated with the different SIP shares. We have a lot more data within the Excel. So let's go ahead and save this output as XLS and look what we have in the Excel file. So here is the Excel file that I got from Nutanix Collector. And let's see what's within this file. So in the summary, you can see we have the cluster name. Basically, this is a cluster level summary. We have the cluster name. Uh, what is the total provision capacity in TIB? How much of it is free? How much of it is used? What's logical used? What are the savings due to deduplication, compression, and the deduplication and compression ratio? And we also have the count of the number of volumes using which the SIP shares are carved out and the count of the SIP shares. So this provides you a high level summary. And if you want to go into the details, you can go to the SIP shares and you can see the individual share names over here, the share paths and the volume used to carve out the SIP share, what are the access level controls and the SVM or the vServer used to create the SIP share. The meat of the data is in the volumes tab or the volume sheet, wherein you can see the volume name, what's, what's the total provision capacity for this volume, how much of it is free, how much is used, how much is logical used, what is the storage reserved for snapshots, what is the performance level of this volume. Like in this case, you can see this is a performance fixed. This is you see value fixed. In case of databases, you would see extreme fixed. And then what are the deduplication savings and uh, compression savings across these volumes? Apart from this, you will also see that uh, we have some details around the backup policy and the status. What is the name of the backup policy? Whether it's enabled, not enabled? What is the frequency at which the snapshots are taken? or the backups are taken, how many snapshots are retained, and once again, 
the SVM or the vSERM only. Please note that we have configured or provisioned only a few GB of capacity and that is why the values are extremely low in this demo. Now moving on to the QoS tab, uh, you can look at what are the different uh, performance levels associated with each of the volumes. For example, let's take the home directory. So it's a user defined uh, QoS policy and these are the max throughputs that are expected. In case of extreme, you can see that it is way higher and you can also see how many workloads are part of this uh, QoS policy. So this data can be extremely helpful in sizing Nutanix files. To, and then we, you can also see how many nodes are there in this cluster. Uh, we have a single node cluster over here. Hence there is only one node over here. Uh, what is the health of the node? What's the CPU ID? Uh, this is on the cloud, so we have some CPU ID over here. What's, what's the speed of the CPU? How many processes are there? What's the memory configured? And who is the vendor, right? And then the metadata sheet. What's the version of NetApp that's running on this boxes? Uh, what's the ONTAP OS that is running? Is it a clustered data on tap or a seven mode? Uh, please do note that we do not support seven mode and support for NetApp filers is available only from clustered data on tap version 8.3 or above. So we are going to enhance much more in the future, but this is just the first version and we hope that you like this and it is going to help you in sizing Nutanix files much more accurately. Thank you.